Welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson. I'm here in Harbor Springs with Brandon Kresnick. This young man here is one heck of a trapper. We're out running a trap line today with him. You won't want to miss that. And Jimmy and the guys have some other fun stuff for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. We're actually going to start off by doing a little ice fishing, but instead of using fish finders and high-tech augers, we're going to be using spuds and just good old-fashioned ingenuity. You won't want to miss that story. We're also going to stop in at a pheasant farm in the Lansing area that's really going above and beyond to get more kids involved in the sport of upland hunting and specifically pheasant hunting. Lots of good stuff on this week's show, so you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53 just south of Imlay City Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen by Eagle Claw Chappelle, offering a line of pop-up and flip-over shelters and the new cabin-style Bay Runner 2. Chappelle also offers a selection of sleds, including the new winter camo pattern jet sled. Eagle Claw Chappelle, we have you covered. On the web at chappelle.com. By Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Vanguard, a global manufacturer based in Michigan, featuring rifle scopes, binoculars, and spotting scopes with lifetime warranties. Vanguard supplies sporting optics and accessories for the outdoor enthusiast online at vanguardworld.com. See that little piece of titanium there? It stays very sharp. Huh. And uh, I can't find out anybody that's selling them anymore. Now why do you like those versus a... Uh... Sharp, they stay sharp. Okay. And, uh, and they cut into the ice extremely good. Last week found me not too far from home on one of the many small bayous off the Grand River. Good friend Ray Swanson had been finding fish and was nice enough to let me tag along to do some fishing and run the camera as well. Well, that is a beautiful crappie right there. Yeah. Boy, that took all of about 10 seconds. Nice fish. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like those long rods like that, Ed? Oh, I just, a I, little bit more fight to them, you know? Okay. And it, it's more fun, yeah. Uh, more sensitive too? Or? Oh yeah, definitely, yep. And then, of course, I use the spring bobber, and and Ray, I believe he's using a bobber today. And how about how deep of water are we in here? This is about four foot. Okay, so pretty shallow. Ed Page was also along on this trip. Ed is a good friend of Ray's and is quite the fisherman. Now, both of these guys are a little more old school than most. They catch a ton of fish, but as you can see, there is not an auger, just a spud. And there was no electronics, just patience and a knack for finding fish. The only real up-to-date part of their game plan is the nice long limber rods that they were using today. This pole is not only more fun, but it's more sensitive to the bite. The spring bobber in the end. I grew up bobber fishing, which works great. And I, the first time, first couple times out this year, I used the bobber, just because I'm a traditionalist and I like, I like it. Uh, grew up with it, but now, um, you know, the bobber or the spring bobber shows you any little uh, time that the 
fish inhale the bait. Uh -huh. and so it makes it a lot more fun. It's more fun to work them into the into the hole, and that's a nice bluegill. That's a seven and a half or eight, close to eight. Hmm. Um, so that's why we use the longer poles, and I. Um, it, it is a, a lot more fun. It is always fun to sit with guys that love to ice fish and do it the more traditional way. You hear lots of stories, and you get to see the little things that they do to help their time on the ice, whether that's to be more productive or to be more comfortable, like Ed's little handy heater seat that he built himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all, all handcrafted. And then I have my little heater, my little heater in here. Hmm. which works very well on a super cold day, which today ain't too bad. Now you leave it right in there? Yep. Oh, you're kidding. Nope. <laughs> and it doesn't uh, and I tell you light what, anything on fire, eh? No. Well, I don't know if you can see, but on the inside, I got a piece of aluminum up on the top. Oh, yeah. Huh. And, uh... That works pretty good, eh? Oh, you can sit on it here, Jimmy, and you can feel the, the heat coming right out of here, so you never fish with gloves. Wow. Well, that's a good idea. That little demon glow I was telling you about, purple tip, uh -huh. that kind of a almond cream color, and and uh, I started out with two white spikes and I've switched to a red and a white. Uh, seven, seven and a half maybe. Is that a keeper? That's a keeper. Yeah. You can tell where he's been bit by a. Hiker, a big bass. See these spots right here? Mm -hmm. He healed from it a number of years ago. Uh -huh. that, that's a gill. There's a nice Ooh. one. Yeah, there's a nice one. There's an eight inch. That fills up the hand real good. Very nice. The first hour or so was a little slow, but things seemed to pick up right away. And I asked Ray why they don't use fish finders that are so prevalent today. Probably, you know, I, I don't like a, a cable going down the hole. Okay. Uh, and I see guys struggle with that occasionally. The guy I watched, uh, the charter boat fisherman that was fishing on Millhouse the other day, was uh, every time he got a fish on, he'd lift the cable out of the water. He was fishing on his knees. And I just don't care for that. Um, I just like, and the longer the pole, the harder that is. He had a short pole with a reel. Yep. And uh, he was fishing 17 feet of water, so you need a reel or hand over hand motion. But um, it was basically, uh, these, these are a lot more fun. You've seen me intentionally not pulling these fish out as quickly as I can because that's the fun part of fishing. <laughs> uh, getting a good bluegill on a blue, long bluegill pole like this that's real limber. Um, it's, you know, we lose a few at the hole, but so what? <laughs> <laughs> They'll go back and live another day, and we'll catch them another day. There you go. Uh, once they get the size. Well, Ray said anybody could do this, so I figured I'd give it a shot. You're doing great, Jimmy. Yeah, it's a nice little fish. It's a sunfish. Show it off there. We'll come up close. Yeah, nice little guy. It's a keeper. Yeah. About a six. Yeah, an incher. not bad. Yeah. Boy, that's nice, those long limber poles. You Isn't can that really, fun? Uh, really feel the bite pretty easily. Well, good job, Jimmy. Let's Catch see. another one. Well, I have to say I had a great time with Ray and Ed. Got to hear lots of stories and got to actually catch my limit of fish as well, something that does not happen very often. It was nice to fish with guys that didn't have all the latest, greatest fish finders. Now, we will for sure show lots of folks this ice season that fish that way, and that is fine. It's a great way to fish and highly productive. 
But at least for today, it was kind of neat to get back to what really got so many of us into fishing, and that is just the love of being outdoors, regardless of the gear that we take afield. Now, I was practically blindfolded as to where we exactly were, and to be honest, I don't think I could get back there if I tried, but rest assured, it wasn't any place that was much different than any of the many, many bayous off the Grand River. The reason we caught fish today was that I was with two guys who know how to ice fish and have been at it for decades. And that, my friend, is the best fish finder you could ever ask for here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, in this next story, I'm out here in the wilderness of Harbor Springs. Now, most of the time when you think of Harbor Springs, Michigan, you don't think of trapping, right, Brandon? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm out here following along with young Brandon today on his trap line, and we're going to learn everything he knows about trapping. A couple of weeks back, I received an email from Heidi Kresnek. It was a story of her 16-year-old son, Brandon, and his love of trapping. A few days later, I was making the trek to Harbor Springs to meet them in person. Hey! hey. Heidi, Brandon. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet, meet you. you. Boy, it's gorgeous up here. Beautiful weather. A little oh, snowy, man. but... So Brandon, you're the big trapper? Uh, yes, I am. Cool. So what are we going to be doing today? Where are you taking us? Uh, well, we're going to take you around the property a little bit and show you a few of my fox sets and maybe down in the water show you a few of my making muskrat. All right. Sounds good. And then maybe skin something out? Yeah, yeah. And I forgot. I'll skin a muskrat for you guys, show oh. you how to put it up and stuff. Perfect. Okay. Our first stop this morning was just down the road at a little gravel pit. With a couple of feet of snow on the ground and more coming down, Brandon's trap line was a little limited this week. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Hoping for a fox here? Oh yeah. All right, so tell me about this setup. What do you, it's called a dirt it's hole? It's called set. a dirt hole side. It's basically a hole in the ground. The animal's coming, you put your bait in there. This one I used some beaver meat with some beaver caster. Um, and then you just put your trap right out in front of it. And then I just put some urine on the back of the rock, fox urine, and so hopefully we have a fox. But have you been seeing a fox out here? Yeah, I've been seeing some tracks around, but I mean, matter of time before I get them, I All guess. Right. It looks like something got into it. I'm, I can't tell because it's kind of snowed over, but All right. you know. same concept here, just simple dirt hole. Try to brush some of the snow off. You, you got to make sure these levers are up to facing this way because this is your loose jaw. If you were to put it the other way, that that jaw would be up. You want everything as level as you can get. And to stake in this, I just have one 24-inch rebar stake in the ground. It'll hold fox, especially in the freezing, this cold weather. And then just pack all your dirt back around it. At a trapping convention the other year, I was talking to this guy and an old time trapper, I was like asking him to give me his best piece of advice for trapping and he told me put, put the trap where you believe the coyote's going to step or the fox is going to step. So in this set, just sometimes I'll just put my hand down where I think it's going to step. This one I just felt it was going to step there. Obviously you want it to step on the pan. This right here is the pan, so you, that's the, where it's going to fire. That's where the trap's going to fire. And I mean, put 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 it there. You probably will have one if it comes in. Investigate your set. Heidi has enjoyed watching her son learn and succeed in the trapping world. What she's most impressed with is the young age at which Brandon developed this passion for trapping. Brandon is uh, what my dad and I have always said about Brandon, and he is he should have been born in a different era. Um, he uh, he's kind of an old soul for being 16, and and has been that way since he was young. We went to um, sell some furs, trade them in at the DNR office in Indian River, and uh, you know thought this was pretty normal for his age. And we pulled up, and most of the men there were 55 to 65, 50 to 65, I would say. And then Brandon walked up, 15 years old, and flopped all his furs on the fur truck counter, and they were, you know, I think surprised that someone his age had fleshed all the furs that he had, so. Most parents and kids ask me if I play any sports, and I tell them I, I don't really play sports, but I trap, and they'll be like, well, trapping isn't really a, considered a sport, but I mean, I consider it a sport because I'm outside getting exercise, I'm running around, running my traps, you know, and 
and another thing to mention is, I mean, trapping takes you the closest to nature and that, more than any other sport. I mean, how, how many times can you say you're, you're, you're walking around outside or looking out your truck window to see, uh, see look for tracks or just anything? This spot is one of my favorite trap sets because it was actually where I caught my, connected with my first mink ever, so. Cool. This creek bed is another area that's close to home and easy to access for Brandon. It's one of his go-to spots for mink and muskrat, two of his favorites to try and outsmart with his traps. All right, this is a mink box or a baited mink set. Just right here I have uh, some, some muskrat in the back and I'm, I used weasel gland lure to attract the mink. Basically this is just a 110 body grip trap. Mink love to run in uh, holes, so just about every hole they run, they'll investigate, and they'll find some bait there. Hopefully, they'll be attracted to it. And... Nothing yet, huh? No. So, how often do you check these traps? Um, every day. Every day after school. Sometimes before school in the mornings when I, when I don't have really nothing going on, I'll wake up at like five. You know, I'll just run out here, check a few of them, and. What, what Some, is it like? What, why do you like to do it? What's exciting about that? Well, um, it's, I mean, it's the rush of having something, you know, you, I like it because, I mean, you were there, you put it down there, it's like you did everything and the animal committed to your set. I mean, he could walk anywhere, but he decided to go on your trap. It's just something that's fun. Brandon's passion for trapping definitely shows, so much so that his parents let him turn half of their garage into a skinning shed. In just a few short years, Brandon has learned a lot about fur harvesting, and it all started in a pretty simple way. The guy that works with my dad, he uh, came out, set like three weasel boxes out for me, and he's like, I'm going to leave these out here, you, you have to check them every day. And I started doing that, and then I eventually moved on to like trapping raccoons and everything, and I guess it just started picked up from there. I just started um, watching YouTube videos. He gave me a weasel actually to skin it, and he gave me one. He's like, "All right, you got to make it look like this," and I I tried skinning it, and I I messed up pretty a lot, but I mean I, I I learned from there, and then I caught my first raccoon, and so I looked up videos how to skin it. The first year I just skinned them. And which was green, but that's what it's called. And then you just roll them up after you skin them, put them in the freezer. And uh, then that same year, I caught my first mink, and that's where I was, that's where I think I got hooked, because I was really surprised to see that, and I was like, that, this is really cool. Which I mean, it's cool to carry on the tradition. I mean, not many people do it, so I figured I should do it. It's fun. It's truly amazing to see such passion and dedication in this young man who took up trapping on his own and pursues the sport with a discipline not found in many kids his age. Brandon has found a way to challenge himself, improve constantly, and immerse himself every day in this wondrous beauty we call Michigan's Out of Doors. If there's one type of hunting that it's tough to get kids involved with here in the state of Michigan, it's pheasant hunting. And there's one preserve right down the road from me that's trying to do something about that. Just north of Durand, Muzzy Pheasant Farm hosts an annual kids hunt to get kids involved in upland bird hunting. Hunting pheasants used to be a big deal for kids a couple of decades ago, but with declining numbers and less land available to hunt them, pheasant hunter numbers have dwindled over the years. Joe and Beth Respecki have decided to try to do something about that. Well, you know, it's, it's paying it forward, it's paying it back. And uh, we looked at it as, we were fortunate enough back in 2001 with uh, Pheasants Forever to put young kids through these programs. We started out with 10 kids. I think when my friend and I had to step out of it, we were close to 40, 50 kids were going through the program. And um, we were fortunate enough to watch now that we've opened this, to have those kids are grown and they're bringing kids to it. And it's fun because they come out into the barn and they're like, hey, that's me when I was your age. You know, years have gone by. So the seeds that we planted are, have taken off. And that's our future as far as conservation. It's our, uh, our license. It's, you know, putting it back. Way back, you know, years ago, we, there was, we don't leave any kid behind program instead of sitting inside and doing the video games. This was a, a fun way. After shooting a few clays to get the youth familiar with wing shooting, it's time to hit the fields. The Respecki's daughter Emily would be the guide today and she got the hunt started a short walk from the barn. So what we're going to do is there's a trail about halfway through the property. We're going to start in this corner right here 
and push east. And then once we get to that trail halfway, because we put the birds up on that front half, we're gonna hunt this front half first. So just pay attention to me when I tell you. So just listen to me and how we're gonna turn around. Other than that though, we're gonna do this front half first. And then if we don't have all of our birds, we see of all, all of our birds, we got that second half to do, but we're gonna save that to last because it's thicker and harder to walk. Emily is a big part of Muzzy Farms. Not only does she run hunt several days a week, but she also runs many of the day-to-day -day operations at the preserve. Um, I like to think that I do everything here. I get some help from other people. There's definitely a lot of people involved with helping out a lot of family members and stuff. But the parents, I like to say that they're the administration and that I kind of do the grunt work. But if you come out on an average day, um, you'll, I'm the one that you'll see. I'll have fresh coffee on for you in the morning and then uh, you'll come out do your hunting and then I'll be here to clean your birds when you get back. I was about 10 years old when I started getting into this. Um, we got a new dog up from a pheasant farm and instead of sending the dog away to school, my parents thought it would be a good idea to send me away to school to learn how to train the dog. So that was a fun adventure. Um, I met once a week with a lady named Kim Bryson um, every Wednesday night and she would teach me everything I needed to know to get my dog in gear. We started doing AKC and UKC hunt tests. And then after that, I started getting busy with high school, sports, life kind of got in the way, so I got out of it a bit. And I always did hunting on the weekend, but now I get to do it every, pretty much every day I'm out here between putting the birds out and guiding the dog. So I get to hunt for a living, I guess. It's pretty cool. Good job. Good girl, bring it here. Good job. Did you get that one? Yeah. What happened? Well, hey, you just spooked it up and I shot. Pretty cool, huh? You like pheasant hunting? Yeah. The kids were having a great time watching the dog work. Emily has spent a lot of time with her lab, Chaps, and it was fun to watch her get birdie. Nice shot. <laughs> nice shooting. Thanks. You had to clean it, up, clean it up for the rest of the line, huh? <laughs> What happened? What happened on that one? I just got too far behind it, so I got the butt of it, but it went down. <laughs> nice shoot. Nice shoot. How often do you hunt? Uh, not that often, but I'm gonna start more. You like this pheasant hunting? Yeah. Brownie gold cap, blood on it. 
These youth definitely shoot a lot better than I did at their age. Despite the cold weather, everyone had a great time out in the field. Special thanks to Muzzy Pheasant Farm for hosting such a great event to get kids outdoors. Well, hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. A couple quick things before we go. If you missed part of this week's show or maybe last week's show, you can always check us out online at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there. They're also on YouTube. Or if you do the Facebook thing, we're on there pretty much every other day or so letting you know what's going on as we're traveling this great state. Actually, Jordan and Jenny are up in the UP uh, actually starting today, so look for some good updates from them over the next several days. And uh, coming up over the next couple of months, actually, we have our two big buck nights that are going to be happening. We're going to be doing one big buck night east that's going to be in novi at outdoorama and then we have big buck night west and that's in grand rapids that's towards the middle of march if you shot a big buck or if you know someone that did go ahead and get that deer scored by commemorative bucks of michigan we're going to be getting those scores here and then we'll invite people to those big buck nights it's going to be a lot of fun and our friends at vanguard have some great prize packages they're going to be giving away that night as well lots of good stuff coming over the next few weeks here in michigan out of doors and if we don't see it in the woods or on the water hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your pbs station michigan out of doors is presented by by the Michigan Chapters of Safari Club International. For over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI Chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama February 25th through 28th at Novi Suburban Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, wildlife encounters, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi February 25th through 28th. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine tree.